Good evening. I want to welcome you to our recorded makeup session for the November Northwest Arkansas Beekeepers Association meeting. Uh, a few announcements I wanted to make sure everyone was aware of. Uh, we've got our website there. Um, hopefully the new website will be going live soon. Um, hopefully by Christmas. Um, we On the website you can look at for the uh, list of board of directors and links to some helpful uh, places. Um, you can sign up for email reminders for the meetings and sign up to be on the swarm list in the spring. Um, just wanna encourage anyone can become a member even if uh, they don't have bees yet. Uh, if you want to just come and learn, uh, it's $15 annually, which is um, great, and you we do um, monthly meetings from February to October, and at the monthly meetings we'll have a program with education about different topics that is pertinent to beekeepers, and uh, we'll have raffles, drawings uh, for prizes and things like that. Um, we will not have a meeting in December and January and hope that everybody has a safe and um, good holiday season. Um, also check the websites we will post um, uh, and also send out emails for people that are on our email distribution list um, for any announcements. We are planning some beginning beekeeping classes in January and February, so stay tuned for that. We do want to uh, ask for volunteers. Uh, if anyone is interested in any of the committees that are seeking volunteers, feel free to reach out to Annette Rao, and her information is on this slide. Uh, membership Planning Committee, this is the committee that, that helps to arrange the monthly programs for the membership meetings. Um, the Community Outreach Committee, which I've been the chair of this last year. Uh, we have gone and done a lot of outreach activities to help um, just raise awareness about honeybees and the need for them and just educating. Um, we've done a lot of, of children's programs, just helping kids to understand that bees are important and um, things like that. So, um also, the Apprentice and Mentoring Program, uh, if you are interested, uh, we had a, a great uh, mentoring program this last year and hope to continue to build strong relationships between uh, experienced beekeepers and uh, ones that are, that are newer or just getting started, um, helping with hands-on teaching, demonstrations, and things like that. This last year we had a field day and we're hoping to have several um, starting earlier in the year so that people can get some hands-on experience for um, what types of things you look for when you get into a hive. Um, and then lastly, we're looking for a social mediator, media moderator. Uh, if anybody's interested in, in helping with this, once the new website goes live, uh, there is a forum section where people can ask questions or post um, different topics, things like that, and there'll be some uh, people needed to help monitor the activity and, and help with that. All right, so moving into the um, program that was planned for November. Um, my name is Carrie Stoles. I didn't introduce myself, but I'm a backyard beekeeper. I'm also a registered nurse and an advanced practice nurse. Um, and this, uh, we've been, my husband and I have been keeping bees for about six years. We're going into our seventh year. And he's the one that was interested first in getting started, but um, it has become a passion of mine as well. So um, we, I was asked for November to just share some tips for what do we do over the winter? and some things that you might want to keep in mind. So it's winter, now what? We want to ensure that hives have enough stores going into the winter. Uh, hopefully you have reduced space and kind of consolidated 
um, the resources in your hive so that the bees don't have to travel um, too far within the hive to get what they need. Um, treat for mites if needed. Um, this is something that generally you want to do in the fall and then also in the spring uh, to make sure that your bees are healthy to, to thrive. Uh, take steps to control outside pests. Clean and store equipment frames and boxes and prepare supplies for the next season. Winter is a great time to read up on um, books or watch videos, things, learn new skills uh, that help us to grow as beekeepers. And then talk with friends who might be interested in getting into beekeeping and encourage them to get involved. So going into winter, you want to make sure that the hives have enough stores. Uh, we've talked about in some of our other meetings, um, about 50 to 60 pounds per hive is generally sufficient. Um, you can kind of lift the, the back of the hive to kind of get a, an idea of how much weight there is there. Um, usually you want to do that early in the winter and then um, as winter progresses periodically you want to go once a month maybe and go uh, heft the back of your hive to see uh, how, they're, how they're doing if it feels like they've got enough resources. Um, in northwest Arkansas um, and again some places further north um, or in certain locations, your temps may get colder than what um, the general area gets. So um, just pay attention to uh, your weather and, and what's going on locally. Uh, if your hives do feel light um, when you get some warm days in a row, usually you don't want to get into the hives unless the temperature is above 50 to 55 degrees. Um, and we don't want to stress the bees by getting into the hives unnecessarily. So, um, but if it feels like that, that they're light on stores or you did a check in the fall and you weren't sure if they were going to have enough pollen, uh, when you, there's a warm day, you can crack the hive and put in a, a pollen patty or um, dry sugar um, that helps to um, evaporate any moisture in the hive and uh, they, can, they can take that and convert into energy. So in, in our area, generally, uh, hives don't need to be wrapped. Um, usually the, the bees don't heat the hives. They heat the ball. So as long as they have enough resources in an area that they can reach, then they will be able to keep themselves warm and um, survive the winter. So if you do have areas where you have high winds though, you may want to um, put some ratchet straps around your hives to make sure they don't blow over. Um, some people will stack hay bales or um, put a windbreak up to help um, keep the wind from uh, affecting the hive. Um, you want to uh, keep in mind that, that if you do hay bales and things like that, um, once those get wet, sometimes they can, they can um, store fungus or um, other house insects and things like that that can get into the hive. So just be aware of that and um, keep an eye on things. So some of the ways that you can uh, control outside pests would be to reduce entrances on the hives. Uh, they have uh, commercial things like mouse guards that are these metal grates that the bees can get into and out of, but mice can't get in and out. Uh, we have had some hives that had roach issues, and so um, again, check your hives periodically and hopefully you know what's going on in them. You may need to place uh, some of these things to keep um, these out of your hives. During the winter months, usually small hive beetles are not as big of an issue, but um, we use the Swiffer pads, the unscented Swiffer pads, and, and put them in the corners of the boxes to help um, trap beetles. Um, you can also use diatomaceous earth that um, uh, in the beetle traps uh, if you use those. So during the winter, we want to take time to clean our equipment and make sure that we're good to go going into the spring. Uh, even during the um, summer months, it's a good idea to wash your bee, seat, bee suit periodically um, to remove pheromones, remove wax and propolis. 
Um, this also helps to uh, prevent the spread of any diseases between hives. Uh, they suggest using a washing soda uh, to help remove and break down some of those substances on your bee suit. Uh, you can sterilize some of your equipment, uh, hive tools, and things like that. Um, we have a, um, um, it's not a propane torch, but it's similar to that, but uh, butane, I think, but um, you can heat your hive tool uh, in between hive checks to help kill any bacteria or um, viruses, things like that, prevent spreading disease between your hives. Um, you can also periodically soak your tools in a uh, mild bleach solution, and that also will help to, to kill viruses and bacteria. It's recommended to wash queen excluders in hot water with this washing soda as well and a small amount of soap um, or a bleach solution. I, I listed a link there that um, there was a study done that, that compared um, different concentrations of bleach solution and um, looked at how well that sterilized the equipment. So interesting uh, information there. You can also do a warm moist heat um, if you have the room to be able to do that um, safely uh, and that can also sterilize your equipment. So during the winter we also want to look at cleaning and replacing uh, equipment that may be worn. Um, so periodically every three to five years, your um, frames, your brood frames need to be rotated out and replaced. Uh, it's suggested you can either freeze those or when it's freezing outside, you can leave them outside and then scrape it while it's cold. That, that cold temperature helps to uh, make the wax more brittle, makes it easier to scrape those off. Uh, you can then reuse those. Uh, if it's plastic foundation, you can reuse the foundation uh, by dipping it in boiling water or you can uh, soak it in like a, a bleach solution. Uh, they suggested one part bleach to five parts water and then air drying and then, <clears throat> excuse me, you're ready to go in the spring. Uh, if you decide to um, order uh, wax foundation, sometimes the, the suppliers will not ship it when the weather's so cold because the wax is more brittle when it's very cold. So um, when we're storing equipment, we wanna take care to keep um, bugs and things out of that. And wax moths are something that can uh, ruin some very nice um, wax foundation or um, drawn comb that the bees have worked hard to make. So if you're storing uh, frames that you plan to use in the spring, um, you want to be sure that you're taking care to um, keep the wax moths out or your frames may end up looking like this. So some strategies are to um, wrap them um, in uh, like trash bags or put them in a stack. I've seen um, people put newspaper and then put the, the paramoth. You want to be sure that you aren't using regular mothballs because those can be harmful to the bees. There's, there's substances that, that will remain that, that they don't like and uh, they won't reuse those frames. But the paramoth um, crystals or these um, are safe to use for, for bee equipment. But I've seen where if you've got stacks of boxes that have frames that have some wax in there, um, every couple boxes you can put a layer of newspaper and sprinkle some more um, crystals there so that um, that keeps the, the smaller areas um, concentrated enough to keep the wax moths out. And then we also want to take this time in the winter to prepare for spring. Spring is our busy season. That's when the bees get busy. That's when they run out of room. And so we want to prepare for um, the equipment that we'll need. Uh, decide whether you want to, um, what size, if, you, if you're wanting to expand your apiary. 
think about each, each hive can be split at least once, and some of the bigger hives may split multiple times um, to make uh, starter nukes or, or new hives. And so decide based on what you have, what you will need going into the spring and um, prepare for the boxes or frames and things that you'll need um, so that you don't end up having your bees swarm and losing those bees. So, and then some of the things to research is if you don't want to expand um, the size of your apiary, if you want your hives just to grow stronger to be able to uh, make more honey, um, be sure that you're checking weekly or every other week to make sure that they're not um, running out of room and they're not getting ready to swarm in the spring. So also, if you plan to sell nukes, this is something that, that some new beekeepers even can do. Um, be aware that you do need to have uh, an, a current inspection within six months. And I did list our state inspector's information on this slide. Um, and he'd be happy to set up a time in the spring to help check your hives so that you're good to go if you want to sell a nuke. If you don't have bees, winter's a great time to start preparing. It's a great idea to watch some videos, read books, um, watch, uh, we will have our uh, beginner beekeeping classes that are recorded um, and the classes that we are planning to have in the spring I'm sure will be recorded again. Um, but lots of good information um, from experienced beekeepers um, and we've got some uh, more, I don't know, um, more book educated. We've got some entomology folks um, planning to help with, with some of the classes this year. So we'll get some uh, different perspectives and some different information. Uh, it's not, not every class is going to be the same. So look forward to those. There are also some um, uh, classes offered by the University of Arkansas free. Um, I will try to get the link for that posted as well. And uh, consider the type of hives. If you don't have hives or if you have hives and are having trouble um, either with the um, physical aspects of it, some people run all mediums or supers um, because they're lighter. Some people run eight frame, uh, uh, eight frame boxes instead of tens um, for the traditional Langstroth boxes. And then some people do the, um, the long langs or the horizontal hives uh, that don't have to be stacked and unstacked. So those are all things to consider. There are also um, uh, extra deep uh, long hives that um, may not need to be as checked as frequently. So these are all options to uh, look into when you're looking at uh, getting started or expanding your uh, operation. If you have any questions about any of these things, I've got my information here. I'm also on the um, B Club uh, under the outreach information. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, or Annette. And um, we look forward to seeing you in February at the next classes. Thank you.